it is. Thank you. So we are Facebook Live. So I think we, we can start. Right? We're all ready? Ready. Ready? Yeah. Go. Wow. That's right. Ready and energized. So welcome all of you to our Black History Month celebration. You know that we've been doing this for many, many years, at least 15 years. And it's the first time that we're doing it virtual. <laughs> But hopefully next year we'll be back again. I mean, we do some events live and some we do virtual because we have to find a balance and try to accommodate all of our members' needs. We, some can't go out, some can. So having said that, um, thank you again. And I want to turn this over to Roland Sanchez Medina, our chairman of the board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lily. And, and you know, as, as wonderful as Lily is and the entire board and uh, the chairman-elect, Jose Perez de Corcho, um, the success of the chamber wouldn't wouldn't happen without uh, our wonderful sponsors and partners, and one of them that um, that I uh, that Lily knows very well and that I've been so impressed with has been Claudia Puig. I mean, Claudia is the uh, president and general manager for Univision Communications, and um, just a very impressive lady, sharp as a tack, um, and it's it's been really a pleasure and an honor just to work with her. And so I understand now I understand why why Lily raves about her so much. And so, I mean, Claudia, if you want to say a few words, please. Well, I, I'm just thrilled to be able to have connected with South Florida Hispanic Chamber. There, you guys are a source of energy for me. I can't keep up with you guys. You guys have a seminar, you're ahead of the curve and everything that's happening in this community. <clears throat> Every time I think something this community needs, you guys are already on it. I'm just so proud and honored and, and thankful for the opportunity to be able to partner up with all of you, be able to ride Lily's coattails with her energy and be able to be part of all the great things you all do because you do every single day, every single week. I, I swear, I can't keep up with it. I try, but it's just, and this one in particular, I really wanted to be part of that, you know, because it's a, this is to honor the Black History Month for Univision is really committed to working closely with the African-American community as well as all of our communities of colors, regardless of language, for the betterment of South Florida. And we're really happy to support this very important occasion. So this one's really particularly dear for us, Lily, and thank you for having us as your partner. We wanna celebrate and highlight all the accomplishments and milestones of the African-American community, to all our communities of color, and to our nation's history. So I wanna congratulate these two leaders that we have here today being recognized today for their amazing contribution to the South Florida community and to the third one that we brought along that we also want to uh, 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 recognize and uh, commend for her contributions to our great community too. With that, I thank you for having me here and I roll it back to you, Lily, because I know we have two great leaders that we want to hear from. I, I think we first got to hear from another partner, which is Frank Fernandez and I, I've known Frank uh, maybe for 15 years, um, and but most recently he joined um, through Center State Bank and he's the senior vice president. And just, uh, like I said, man, we, we've been very lucky. He's a tremendous guy, he's a tremendous banker. And I don't know, Frank, if you wanna say a few words as we get started. Oh, thanks Roland, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, because yeah. I switched over to the uh, headset. Uh, well, hey, listen, Lily calls. We make things happen, right? You know, basically, I, I just saw her in two spots in the square. See, that's the energy. She's like all over, you know, not just in one, but two <laughs> places at once. Uh, anyways, so yeah, Lily, uh, thank you for for um, you know giving me the opportunity to be the presenting sponsor. Uh, Black History Month. Uh, I can't say more, Claudia. You you pretty much said uh, said it all. Uh, some some incredible things uh, that have been uh, accomplished. Um, uh, we're celebrating that this this month. Uh, Lily, again, thanks for creating this opportunity to do it. Would have been nicer if it was live. Would have been great. Would shake some hands and you know maybe even have a glass of wine, you know, and uh, all the wonderful things that we do normally when we're, you know, honoring folks. Gibson, I heard incredible things. Florence, the same thing. Lily said, I have to be a part of this. So you're going to see the energy. It's, it's these people are just spectacular. So I, I can't wait uh, to hear from you. So I will be quiet. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and let me, like I said, I, I had indicated um, that I got to take care of some, uh, now that I think about it, I think the stress that Lily caused is what caused me to, to chip my tooth. Now that I think about it, how many and, and that kind of makes sense, right? How um, many times have I called and texted you today, Roland? Yeah, only only 87 <laughs> times uh, by by like 9:30 a.m. 
I, I do. My biggest regret is I don't get to see Gibson's full entire outfit because it just from what I see, it looks out, it looks fantastic. Hey, be careful, <laughs> Roland, because with this whole Zoom thing, people need to stay seated. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All, all I know that, that that Gibson gets together with all of us. We're gonna get, we're gonna get in, somebody's gonna get in trouble. So yeah, we need someone. I can see that. Something. And Lily said also, by the way, Lily said, "Hey, you, Roland, Jose, you guys, you know, gotta go, you know take Gibson out, and you're gonna you. This is you know, so. Gibson. Yeah. That's that, that, that's a that, that's a date. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get it on the calendar and we'll celebrate. But thank you both very much. I I, I thank you so much for. For this opportunity to educate our members. And I want to thank Deborah Toomer for joining us today. I know how insanely busy her schedule was, and you made it, Deborah. Thank you. Deborah. Can't wait to hear, uh, be able to tell people a little bit about you. And now we're going to introduce um, Dr. Um, Mark McGowan. Am I pronouncing it right? Who is the um, Ro Robert Stemple College of Public Health and Social Work, FIU. They are our gold sponsors. So. Robert, a few words from you. Well, we're thrilled to be here. Um, it's, it's Mark. I'm, I'm the Associate Dean mm -hmm. of Academic Affairs for the Robert Stemple College of Public Health and Social Work. Um, on, on behalf of Dean Gallarti and, and the entire college, we're, we're thrilled that Professor Florence Greer um, was selected as a recipient for this distinguished award. And um, I mean, it's no surprise. <laughs> Um, she has um, been with us for, well, I won't say how long, Florence, but um, almost she's, 10 years. <laughs> she's been with graduate. us for a long and illustrious time uh, in and, and leading our, our college in terms of public health practice and education. And she has been a core member of our MPH program um, uh, at the local level in terms of bridging to the community with their extensive connections but also at the, at the national level, she leads the um, Association for the Schools of Public Health Programs in, pu and, 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 um, uh, programs in Public Health Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Committee. She's been very engaged with that. So um, she's recognized both locally and also nationally for her service. And I will also add that Florence was a pillar in our um, getting reaccreditation for our public health program, which is accredited by the Council on Education for, for Public Health. We have accreditation through 2027, largely due to efforts that, that Florence does in terms of making the field experience very relevant, but also very scholarly and fitting in with the requirements of the, of the accreditation requirements. So, um, so we're really um, privileged to have her in the college and delighted to put her her forward, her peers and her students love her and adore her as a great um, faculty member, but also just a wonderful human being. She's always available to help with everyone. So um, again, because of her, her contributions and her involvement, we're just delighted to have her in, involved and, and, and put forward as the, um, as the uh, one of the most influential black women in Miami-Dade, which she got the award in 27, but she's now being honored for this as well. So we're really delighted to be here and to Thank put you. her forward. Thank you, Mark. Thank and, you, Dr. McDonald. And as Thank I was you. saying before, before everybody joined us, that I had the pleasure of meeting Florence because uh, we serve in the board of the Miami-Dade Area Health Education Center. So she served as chair and I'm the treasurer and she's always motivated. She's always happy. She, she's the sunshine. And, and that's why she got nominated and that's why she, she won because of the type of personality that she has. Look at her, look at the smile. So it's, it's like <laughs> our, honor, our other honoree, you know, Gibson, people that are just bring life to every room that they, you know, you walk in a room and they're just, they're a ray of sunshine. So it's, it's a pleasure to, to, to always recognize people like, like Florence and, and Gibson. <laughs> and like I said previously, we celebrate annually Black History Month and as Hispanics. Um, we have a great relationship always with African Americans and we've been doing this for 15 years and hopefully next year we'll be doing it live. But now I want to turn this over to our chair elect, who's Jose Perez de Corcho, who will be doing the, the first presentation of the uh, award ceremony today. Thank you, Lily. And uh, it's an honor for me to be in, uh, in this uh, group. Uh, I look around and I see a lot of connections between the South Florida Hispanic Chamber and FIU. 
I must say that I'm not only an alum, but I'm a past president of the FIU Alumni Association. Both Lily and I also serve in the President's Council. So there's a lot of close relationships within our community. As Lily mentioned, our chamber has been very close with the African, com African American community for a very long time since the inception of, of our um, chamber. And when Black History Month comes around, it takes me back to thinking uh, of my days coaching my kids in Little League Baseball. We think Black history, everybody thinks, okay, uh, you know, who, who stands out? Obviously, we all have our favorites. For me, it's Jackie Robinson. So uh, I have a very fond memory of coaching Little League Baseball and Jackie Robinson as being an idol to my kids, especially my daughter who grew up playing baseball. So just wanted to share that with the group. Um, Turning over to introducing uh, Florence Greer. Uh, uh, for all of you that don't know who uh, Florence is, Florence is a clinical assistant teaching professor at uh, the public health uh, practicum coordinator at FIU. Uh, Florence has an extensive experience in public health. She served as an investigator consumer safety officer with the US Food and Drug Administration in Detroit, where her duties at the FDA included enforcement and law, laws regulations protecting the public's health. After working for the FDA, Ms. Greer continued her studies at FIU by pursuing an MPH, not familiar with an MPH, but Flo, I'm sure you will better know about that. Upon graduating with uh, her MPH degree, Flo accepted a position with the Florida Department of Health in Miami-Dade as uh, the teen pregnancy coordinator. After accepting a position at the Office of HIV AIDS as the Minority AIDS co Coordinator, Flo provided uh, and coordinated technical assistance and consultation regarding minority-focused HIV AIDS activities in Miami-Dade County. This included community planning and prevention, uh, collaborating with local community planning group groups, colleges, universities, community-based organizations, schools, faith, based organizations and others to promote and conduct HIV AIDS activities to reduce new infections and increase HIV testing. In her current position as the public health practicum coordinator instructor, Flo seeks practicum placements for MPH students as an applied practice experience along with integrated learning experiences to prepare students as public health professionals while also assisting with career advising. And Florence Greer, I'm sorry I'm calling you Flo, but I'm seeing the messages pop up and everybody's <laughs> just calling you Flo. I was not gonna say Miss Greer. So thank you for all you've done for our community. Florence, um, here's your award. You. It will be, um, do, can you guys see it? We will be, okay. we will be shipping it to you. <laughs> it's here. Okay. And it reads, um, uh, the Spanish Chamber of Commerce presents Florence Greer, MPH, MPA, the Outstanding Community Service Award. Thank you for all well, your- Thank you. Thank you, you could say- Well, thank you. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Jose. Uh, Dr. McGowan, Gibson, Deborah. Um, I'm trying to get the words out because I usually just like to stay in the background uh, because I, I want the students to be the ones who are shining and are out there. And what I try to do essentially is I'm trying to pass the public health torch onto the next generation of, of public health leaders. And I'm, I'm happy that some of my former students are, are here and, and colleagues and friends. And I, I thank you for being here. I thank you for your love and your support. Uh, but uh, Jose, you were asking about MPH, uh, Master of Public Health, <laughs> because uh, we certainly see the importance of public health now as far as what we're dealing with with COVID and even how that has impacted businesses and what you have going on there at the chamber. So you can see how all of this is hand in hand with businesses and, and public health that we need one another and that it's gonna take us to try to get through all of this. So I thank you so much for this award. Um, my family's excited. They're more excited than I am, but I just wanted to sort of just stay in the background. But thank you so much for this honor. Thank you. Oh, Florence, it is indeed. Very well deserved. Our great pleasure and honor to have you here with us today. Thank you. 
And congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, bravo. Thank bravo. You. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Okay, it's Gibson's turn. Give it, it's Gibson's oh. moment now. <laughs> no, no, everyone just focus on Florence. Just focus on her. You deserve oh. it. You deserve it. I know you have the background, you. but you deserve it, Miss Florence. You Wonderful know. job. I'm also an FIU girl, so I'm so proud of you, Florence. Congratulations. Panthers. Thank you. We're so lucky to have you at FIU. I mean, you're just such an important uh, representative and, and person that FIU needs. You're just the perfect face that FIU needs to continue to <laughs> flourish in this community. Thank you for all your efforts and dedication. Well, and thank extreme, you. It's, it's Gibson's talent. turn. <laughs> no, Florence. Okay. I just want to salute your greatness. Thank you so much. I read your bio mm -hmm. and what I see is a life of service. Martin Luther King says that anyone can be great because anyone can serve. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear that you've dedicated your life to be as mother Teresa said, a pencil in the hand of God. Thank you very much. I salute you. I salute well, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and by the way, Teresa is my middle name and <laughs> And I am classmates at Spelman College with Bernice King, who is the daughter of Martin Luther King and Coretta wow. Scott King. So oh, we are wow. friends. <laughs> wow. Nice. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Wow. Thank you. So Gibson's now, turn. <laughs> no, we got we to gotta okay. shine that light on Florence. <laughs> it's all about you, Florence. <laughs> you. Both of you are wonderful. Um, Gibson, Thank I'm going to read a little bit about you, and then I'll just share because you know, I like to speak from the heart. I don't like to read bios that much, but your bios were impressive. I mean, I know we had to cut it short, but let me, it's, it's amazing. So Gibson Sylvester, MBA, CEO, best-selling author, humanitarian, business expert, celebrity, life coach, resultant in, and inventor. For more than two decades, Gibson wow. Sylvester has informed, inspired, and invigorated audiences in over 50 nations around the world. Sylvester is a self-made businessman, best-selling author, Fortune 500 business consultant, presidential advisor, and one of the most sought after keynote speakers. And we're lucky <laughs> we have him here today. Gibson believes that every single human being has intrinsic value, great worth, great importance, and great potential. He has had the distinct privilege and honor to share his dynamic principles and message with heads of state, royal families, major institutions, professional athletes, Fortune 500 CEOs, policymakers, religious leaders, military leaders, social media influencers, global influencers, and Hollywood movie stars. His compassion and dedication to the less fortunate has led him to raise millions of dollars for various charitable humanitarian efforts and collected over $2.3 million in disaster relief materials, food, building supplies, and other gifts in kind from generous donors, foundations, and personal friends to help the needy. Gibson's faith has led him to organize and mobilize thousands of volunteers to travel with him overseas and volunteer their time to help build schools, build hospitals, build homeless shelters, care for orphans and help after hurricanes and natural disasters in the United States and abroad. So now it's my personal message from the heart. I was introduced to Gibson by Roberto Munoz, a uh, very well known and respected banker. And uh, I had the honor to, in, in, uh, to have him in my show, the Business Minute with Lili Lopez. And that Business Minute was usually like 10 minutes what lasted like 30 minutes, but our conversation prior to recording the show, the digital show, was like 40 minutes. And just the fact of the matter that you <clears throat> heard his bio, he's an amazing gentleman who speaks to all these, you know, kings and queens and princes. And then he gave his time to me, to Lily Lopez, to the South Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce members on that day that I had the privilege of, of interviewing him for that, that meant the world to me. And I will never wow. forget that because that is very important when we get the opportunity to meet people like him that is so well known, so respected and yet so humble down to earth that he said, doing the show with you. And there we were. And not only that, had he been here, we would have had a cafecito, we'd have had lunch. So that's the type of person that Gibson Sylvester is. So Gibson, it is indeed on behalf of our board of directors. And I know that we have some directors here with us, Michelle Febres, René Cibran, Henry Cerri, many that are connected with us and with our, our um, chair elect, Jose Perez de Cocho and our chairman, it is our pleasure to present you also with the Outstanding Community Service Award from the South Florida Hispanic Chamber. And I think I will give this one to you personally because I think we're visiting, you're visiting. Yes, we are. Yep, we are. <laughs> so, Sylvester, the floor. I always call you Sylvester, but it's Gibson. I Thank love you. you guys. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. I do want to say this. Congratulations to my fellow honoree, 
Lily, I think the world of you. And um, I tell the story of your father all the time because his story is a, is a real American story. Uh, the story of the Cuban people in Miami is uh, millions and millions of generations to come will tell that story, a, a story of resilience, of coming back and how he lost everything and came back and, you know, the comeback kid. So I salute your father today. I know that there's uh, friends of mine that's listening from all over the world. So I want to say guten tag to all my friends in Germany. Shalom to my brothers and sisters in Israel. I want to say Oh yeah, come on, bye. Okay, for my Cubanos, bonjour and sac passe to all my Haitians out there. I want to say uh, bonjour or sac passe Russians. I want to say privet to my Russian brothers and sisters, to my Jamaicans, me want to say guaguan, everything I remind. And to my Brazilians, I want to say come on, bye. And I want to say this, thank you for this award. I'm truly humbled by it. I always say this, I am who I am because somebody loved me. Somebody attended to me. Somebody loved me when I was unlovable. Somebody hugged me when I was unhuggable. Um, when I was growing up as a teenager, I had a very hard head. My mother used to say, a hard head makes a soft behind. <laughs> That's a, took a lot of nicks. So I, I stand, uh, Sir Isaac Newton said, if I've seen further than anyone is because I've stood on the shoulder of giants. There's so many giants that have invested in me. The late Zig Ziglar, who was a giant in my world, he invested in me. My mother, my Sunday school teacher, uh, my brother, uh, who's no longer with us, Brian, my other brother, Mackenzie, my older sister, Wilna, my beautiful bride, Bridget, um, uh, Judina, Carson, Rod, uh, Miss Edna, I'm always Miss Edna's baby boy. My father, Harold, so many people. I know I left so many people out, but so many people. Dr. Ken Blanchard, who's a, a good friend of mine. We talk like almost every day. So Black history, I want to talk a little bit about Black history. Growing up, I, I learned about Black history, but I never really understood Black history. What I learned about Black history was that we came here as Black African slaves off of the ship, and then that, that's where our history began. I never knew that Blacks created writing. Did you guys know that? That the first and the oldest writings we have on planet Earth called hieroglyphics what became 4,000 years BC. The first library that Alexander the Great, when he saw it in Alexandria, he, he blew his mind. The great Greek philosopher by the name of Plato, he spent 11 years in the Nile Valley. He went to a school in Kemet. Um, Socrates studied at the same school for 15 years. Aristotle studied there for 13 years. You know, we get the studies of calculus, geometry, astronomy, all from Africa. I'm grateful for Black History Month because I was able to learn about it and thankful for a gentleman by the name of Carter G. Woodson. That's a very important name. Now, Carter G. Woodson, He's the first one that came up and said, hey, we need to study black history. But black history started off, it started off as one week and then he made it into one month. And Carter G. Woodson is very impressive because he was only the second African-American in United States history to earn a PhD only after W.E.D. Du Bois. Now, people always make fun of black history month. They say, why is it the shortest month? Lord, why is it the shortest month? Have you ever wondered that the shortest month? It's like, oh man, the black man's get the short end of the stick again. No, that's not why it was. was. The reason that we celebrate Black History Month in, in, in February is number one, it was Abraham Lincoln, who some say is the greatest United States president. Abraham Lincoln, who freed the slaves in 1865, his birthday is on February the 12th. And Douglas, Frederick Douglass, who's the most eloquent of black slaves, his birthday is on February the 20th. That is why we celebrate it. Now, Kent State University in Ohio codified it and inaugurated it in 1970. It went from being a one week where we celebrated Negro accomplishments to being an entire month of Black History Month. And then Ge uh, President General Ford is the one that made it a holiday. So when I think of black history, I think of my own ancestors. I think about my family. In fact, there is one of my relatives that was actually killed because he learned how to read. 
yes, it was illegal for black slaves to teach themselves how to read. So I think about those ancestors. Black History Month is about one thing. It's about dignity. It's about pride. We did not just come as slaves. We had civilizations before here. And three things that Black history has taught me. One is to be resilient. Right now, we're experiencing COVID-19, and a lot of things are upside down. We have to be resilient. Number two, being resourceful. The Black people are very resourceful. And three, rapturous. Oh, my goodness. We learn, we know how to sing and dance and create art and culture. So be resilient. One thing about being Black, you learn never, never, never give up. Uh, Winston Churchill said, we'll fight on the beaches. We'll fight on the land. We'll fight in the mountains. We never give up. Langston Hughes, who was one of the greatest African-American poets, he once said this in his famous poem, Mother to Son. He, the, the mother says to the son, well, son, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It has been packs in it, splinters, and boards all turn up. But eyes are keep climbing and eyes are keep going. You see, one thing about being Black in America, you learn to be, like the Cuban Americans, very resilient. One of my good friends once said, he's a philosopher. He said, if someone were to drop an atomic bomb on planet Earth, these are the only things that would survive. There would be rats, roaches, Cubans, and black people <laughs> because they are so resilient. Number two, blacks are so resourceful. African-American contributions, they taught us to be resourceful. Like the Cubans, in 2007, I had the privilege, the palm pleasing privilege to visit Habana, Cuba, and Santiago, Cuba. It was one of the best experiences of my life. The suffering, the human suffering, the human carnage under that regime is, is, is absolutely mind boggling. But one thing I learned, this guy showed me this, this, this Chevy that he had. He opened the hood. It was from 1955. Mm -hmm. I saw jugs. I saw cans. I saw gallons. He made it work, okay? And that's what we've had to do. During the coronavirus, we've had to learn how to just reinvent ourselves. Mm -hmm. The last plague in 1895, Sir Isaac Newton was sitting underneath the tree. He sat under the tree. An apple fell, hit him upside the head, and he came up with the theory of gravity. What have you created during this coronavirus? I hope you create something very, very special. Now, could you imagine life without African Americans and their ingenuity? I want you to think about this for a second. There would be no skyscrapers. Why? Because a black man by the name of Alexander Mills invented the elevator. There would be no cars because Richard Spikes created the gear shifter and Joseph Gumbel invented the supercharge, what goes into every engine. And Gerald Morgan invented the traffic lights symbol. I mean, uh, the traffic light. So imagine driving without no, no, no traffic signals. There would be a lot of accidents. John Love invented the pencil sharpener. William Preeby invented the fountain pen. The lawnmower was created by Ben Brown. Joseph Smith invented the sprinkler so our grass would all be brown without sprinklers. <laughs> we wouldn't have any food because John uh, Standard invented the refrigerator and also the oil stove, people that like to cook with oil. So could you imagine the contributions that we've had, that we've, we, we've, we've, we've been very resourceful? And last but not least, African-Americans have contributed tremendously when it comes to culture. We, you know, in the beginning, when slaves were brought over here, the average age for a black person was 27. That means they worked so hard that they died at age 27. Every, for the first hundred years of the United States, every two days, a black man or black woman hung from a tree. Think about that, I want you to think about that. But instead of becoming angry, instead of becoming terrorists, instead of becoming bitter, this is what we gave the world. We created blues music. We created gospel music. We created hip hop. I said a hip, a hop, a hippity, the hippie, the hip hop, the bang, the bang. We created, Muhammad Ali taught us this. He said, I'm gonna float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. He says, his hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. Frederick right. Douglass told us this. He said, it is easier to build strong, strong children than to repair broken men. Jackie Robinson, one of the greatest 
uh, baseball players of all time. He said this, I am not concerned if you like me or don't like me. All I care about is if you respect me. Now, the great late Hank Aaron, who I got a chance to hang out with, he was the one that broke Babe Ruth's uh, home run record. And he told me, um, I took him, I said, hey, we're going to go hang out with some inner city kids. We were trying to get more African-Americans to play baseball. I brought him in the field. He, he didn't want a lot of press. He didn't want a lot of people there. But I said, here's these kids. They've been practicing. They're really good. And he told me this. He pulled me to the side. He said, Gibson. He said, if you ever have a chance and the ability to help someone, always do it. He was only supposed to be there for five minutes. He stayed for an hour. And these kids were looking at him like he was a god, like he was floating. They couldn't believe that they've, they've read about this guy. Aretha Franklin taught us this. What you want, baby, I got it. What you need, you got to show me a little bit. Come on, say it with me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Oh, you guys know, you guys know that. The great, the great uh, songbird, Beyonce, gave us all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. In fact, when she went to Coachella, she turned it into Baychella, okay? Throughout all of this, we had the great one, one of the greatest Americans in American history, Martin Luther King Jr., who our dear honoree, Miss Florence, knows the the daughter and and visits with miss bernie she's a she's a, a a dear dear precious soul martin king taught us this he taught us that anybody can be great because anybody can serve he said if you can't run then walk if you can't walk then he says crawl if you can't crawl just move in the right direction he gave us a, his famous speech he said one day that all men, he says, my children, black children, white children, Latino children, all children will be hand in hand together where we can have a world. We still not there yet, but we can have a world where color doesn't matter, where it all it matters is you're a child of God and I'm a child of God. And he said, let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the slopes of the Rockies in Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. We celebrate all of the many, many Africans that have died so that we could vote, that have died so that we could be educated, that have died so that we can have rights. We salute the ancestors that's in the world that we can't see. We want to thank the chamber. We want to thank um, Univision. We want to thank FIU. We want to thank the bank and we want to salute you guys because we are people, uh, South State uh, Bank, we are people that have been forgotten. We are people that have been uh, abused, but all we've done was love, dance, sing, some fried chicken. <laughs> we produced some great astronauts, some great doctors. Um, thank God for Barack Obama. I never thought I would see the day we would have a black president, but America is a great country. It could still be greater. There's still room for improvement. Thank you guys. I love you with all of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again. Thank you. Congratulations. Mark Gibson, I told everybody <laughs> what you would feel when you hear him speak. Such oh. an inspiration. Frank, you want to say something? Put your mic on. He wants to say something. Frank, we can't hear you. So Gibson, now you got to help us get a Cuban president, okay? <laughs> I think I think we know who that might be. <laughs> Great stuff, by the way. Awesome. Very good. Amazing stuff. Amazing. That. Yes. Just when you come down, bring your glove with you. We're gonna go play catch. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we I go back uh, to present Claudia Pui. We'll be presenting a special recognition to a very special community leader for also on uh, for Black History Month. Claudia? Uh, Lily, I just want to tell you, Gibson, you have energized my life just in seeing <laughs> meeting you today. You have impacted. I'm sure you make an impact on everybody's life you touch, but because today you touch my life. And I 
And I just hope that more people get to meet you and you get to make me as happy as you have made me in this short little time. Thank you. And Ms. Florence, you make us so proud. I really, I, Lily, thank you for allowing me to be here. I'm just so thrilled with the South Florida Hispanic Chamber and your whole board. You do such amazing things. Look at this. Amazing. These are two people that I did not know that have already impacted my life just by being inspired by seeing all they have done. Now I don't dare complain about anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> you said? Sometimes I catch myself and I'm saying, how could I? How can I? Uh, Florence, thank you for representing and being such an amazing face for FIU. You make me so proud. Gibson, I'm telling you, you should run for president. The <laughs> unity, the joy, and the happiness you would bring to this country would be amazing. You would turn around the world. You have the power to do so. I've just seen it. Amazing, amazing. And with that said, I have to say there's this powerful man called <laughs> Bishop Curry uh -huh. uh, that I have always heard about that inspires, that is a voice that unites all our communities and all, uh, and especially the African-American community that I've always seen has been an inspiring because he has a church and he has a radio station. It's small but powerful because he puts Christ first. Amen. But behind every great man, there is a great lady. And I have to tell you, God probably put in my, my path, I don't know how or why it happened, but one day I, water was climbing up here and I had a situation and I had to go before the whole board of commissions because it was a minority issue. Things had gone bad for the broadcast industry and for the minority broadcast industry. And I was looking for partners and I couldn't find anybody. And the next thing I know, I found myself going before the, com uh, the whole commission asking for a referendum because what the Nielsen and the ratings measurements and all that they had passed was wrong. And it was really affecting and killing the minority stations and broadcasters couldn't find anybody. And all of a sudden in less than a, a day, 24 hours, I don't know who put me in your path, uh, who put, put you on my path, Deborah and the Catholic church. So I ended up going with the priest and with Deborah before the commission. Wow. And I have to tell you, so I get there nervous and I read my stuff and I try to sound powerful why this is important and this and the other and all I can tell you if it wasn't because God had put Deborah in my path and Deborah had said yes in two seconds changed her life around got on that ship with me and went before this board and she had I had papers I had to read you know here was Deborah she just stood in front of all of them and she had the most of it first she speaks with authority because she speaks from the heart she spoke with such truth that gave her such power such uh, passion and so much knowledge that I could not believe the words that came out of this fine lady. I could not believe what power she had. She just mesmerized that whole room. Mm -hmm. She mesmerized all the commissioners. She mesmerized everything. And mm -hmm. people just, you could hear a pin drop in that room. She was just so powerful and so amazing. And I was sitting there and I was saying, thank you, God, thank you, God. You always bail me out of these things that I could. And here she was. and. We had unanimous approval of the commission because she was a partner and came along with me and all that. And before I introduce her to, I just tell you a little bit of the things that she has accomplished because she's been honored and she deserves every bit of it. She's been the recipient of the mayor of Miami-Dade Community Community Service Award, the Congressional Community Service Award. She has been named one of the 25 most influential and prominent women in business for 2014. I'm sure she was the leader of the 25 and a legacy South Florida's most powerful and influential black business leader of 2018, has served as Miss Miami Dade win for women in the NAACP and represented the state of Florida during 2000, 2001. I now really present to you somebody that I just so admire and so respect and is so powerful, uh, Miss Deborah Toomer. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia. Uh, I'm so honored to God be the glory is all I can say. Certainly to the chamber, uh, to Lily, the entire board, my other colleagues, the other honorees, Sylvester, Ms. Flora, this is truly, truly a blessing. And you know, sometimes, and I, and I appreciate some of the words, all of the words that actually Sylvester shared, but there's so many other stories that are in our rich history, history and her story. And I want to also add that we also have recently been able to see the first African-American, Asian-American vice president of the United States. So the, the, the saga continues, the story continues, the accomplishments continue. I first must always give uh, glory to God 
because he is first in my life. He is the one that has always continued to show and sign and share the great news of Jesus Christ and also the work that we must do to serve our community. And that is what we do under the leadership of Bishop Curry that you mentioned. And of course, as you mentioned as well, and New Birth Baptist President Church. Of WMBM, yes. most powerful little station in the planet. <laughs> he is our founding senior pastor of the New Birth Baptist Church, first and foremost. Uh, and he has positioned appropriately in God as well. That's a 17,000 plus ministry right here in South Florida and growing with ultimate other uh, ministries throughout the country. Uh, certainly, as you mentioned, WMBM, previously owned by the Margolis Corporation back in the 50s. And I might also add that Larry King got his start on WMBM, as well as Les Brown was an um, inter integral part of our rich history as well. So it's been an honor for me to join the WMBM family. I joined as one of the inaugural employees and God has also elevated me to the position of assistant general manager in the last eight months. So again, to God be the glory, I give him all the praise and the honor and the glory. Uh, it is truly a, a privilege to share in Black History Month, but we celebrate Black History 24-7, 365 days of the year. And so with that being said, of course, we are glad to partner in this special way. Thank you, Claudia, because you do that so well. You connect the dots. And so I look forward to actually spending more time partnering with the Chamber, also partnering with you uh, on an ongoing I, basis. There's so much more we can do, Deborah. So much Absolutely. more we can do. Absolutely. And our honorees. So this is truly a wonderful way to connect dots, make a legacy, develop a legacy. And I look forward to the best that is still yet to come. So again, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Deborah. And we have a little something that we'll be shipping to you too. <laughs> well, thank recognition, you. our special recognition for you for all you contribute to make our community better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you uh, so Ms. much. Lily, I just want to say to all of our, our beautiful sponsors and our, our honorees, uh, please send me a, uh, either through LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram, send me a direct message and I'm gonna give you guys uh, uh, one of my best selling books. So just send me a DM. I wanna just give it to you as a gift, no charge. No, uh, you don't have to give me your email address, no agenda. It's <laughs> just something that just came to my heart. Just, uh, just reach out and I'll send you the uh, copy of the book with uh i love to have the books i'll connect with you lily i would love yes, the books and, and would love for more of my my team and my people to hear from all of you great well thank you thank you all we did good timing it's 3 45 p.m thank you so very much to frank at south state bank david bruna thank you fiu and thank you to our honorees i mean you you have really inspired us i mean i don't need the cuban coffee anymore like i always say at this time Frank is having a little, a little coffee, but uh, with, I mean, with Gibson and with uh, all of you have been just phenomenal. So I thank you so much for your time. Everyone who, all of our guests that are watching us, thank you for, for tuning in to this very important Black History Month celebration that the South Florida Hispanic Chamber of Commerce presented. And on behalf of my chairman, I know he had his dental problem, Roland Sanchez Medina, but the chair elect is here. Jose Perez de Corcho, and I know our secretary of the board was here also, Neri uh, Gonzalez and other board members that I mentioned. So we thank you so very much. And just before we conclude, we do have some announcements. March, Wednesday, March 3rd, we have from 5 to 7.30, a business committee networking reception at Neme Gastro Bar. So that'll be nice. So that's with the new members and the business committee. We also have our Hispanic Leadership Awards, our annual Hispanic Leadership Awards. That's a big event on April 30th. We pushed it back. It's always on late, late March, but we're doing April 30th. And uh, then we're doing also an Italian wine fundraiser via Zoom. And uh, so I hope you all continue to follow us. You know, we're in Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere. We're there and we're there for you because we are, we protect our businesses and we take care of, of, of you as well. So we take all the precautions when we have live events, like everybody has seen, because I always like to say that because I don't want people to think we're careless because we're the only chamber that is really doing live events. But I know that it's, it's critical for our businesses to be out there live and uh, protect them and the, provide the opportunity because as Hispanics and African-Americans, we're very warm people. So we like that personal connection. We can't be all the time in a Zoom call. These are good every once in a while. And you know it's good because for those that can't go out, we do it. And it's nice and we're here and we're connecting. But that personal connection, nothing can replace that, right? Gibson, 
nothing like Amen. the personal connection. So that's why we do live events. But again, with all the precautions, the social distancing, the mask, and we protect our members and we protect ourselves. And having said that, I thank you all so very much for, for participating in our annual Black History Month celebration. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Congratulations to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. you all. Peace and love. Absolutely. <laughs> God bless everyone. Yes. Thank I you. miss you Bye -bye. all. Bye -bye.